I was thinking to myself, if we begin the subject of Pesach, we might end up missing on an incredible thought that could change not just the Pesach that we're going to celebrate, but us as a Klal Yisrael. And I was working on this for some time. And I want to take a few steps back and begin with something that if we don't prepare for the Pesach, then the Pesach itself will not be what it could be. And I'm hoping that this is the last Pesach that we ever experience in Klal Yisrael. And don't get me wrong, I love Pesach beyond. But you understand that we're so close to a Geulah, Klal Yisrael. Let's wake up. Let's look at the moment in the eye and let's not procrastinate. It's not going to come without us. And we need to do what we need to do in order to be able to bring the Geulah. Borei Olam tells us you're going to see a moment that all these pieces of this incredible puzzle that we're watching going on in the world, whether it be Ukraine or whether it be the United States or whether it be Russia or later on it might be Iran and Israel right now a little bit also is in somewhat of turmoil and there's a lot going on. And then at the end of the day, and here we are at the time that Chazal tell us, Benisan nigalu Israel, u Benisan atidin ligael. That means that every Nisan that comes our way, there is the knock of opportunity. And Hashem wants to know, what are you going to do with it? Because opportunity is knocking. The Sheila is, are we going to answer? Do you remember that amazing sugya, guys, we did in the morning in the Kolel? Recently, we did that beautiful sugya of Somech, Geula, Litfila. And over there, the Gemara talks, spoke so much about how important it is to be Somech, Geula, Gaal Yisrael, which are the Berachot that come right after Kriyat Shema, and Amona Isvatai Tiftach, the Amida itself. And Rashi told us something there. Rashi said, says Rashi, because if you're not Somech, Geula, Litfila, if you don't put together close the blessing of Ga'al Yisrael and Hashem Tzvatai Tiftach, it's a mashal to somebody that knocked on the door of the king. And when the king came to answer the door and to be able to help out whoever is knocking, the guy kisses and runs away. You left him hanging. Every and his son, we left him hanging. Because he's knocking at our door. That's why I want to talk to you tonight. I want to talk to you tonight about an aspect of Pesach. That all year we're knocking on Hashem's door. But in Nisan, Hashem comes and knocks on our door. And he's saying, I want to take you home. Banai. Did you see that beautiful Gemara on Dav Gimel? We did that amazing Gemara. That every single night, Hashem is sho'eg. He roars like a lion and he cries out, Banai, my children, where are you? What happened? I want you to come back to my shulchan. I want you to come back to me, says Boreola. And says Eliyahu Navi to Rabbi Yossi, not only at night, but every single time, a Jewish person comes into a shul and he steps up to a minyan and he answers, Amen, Yehe, Shemeh, Rabbah, Mivarach. Hashem, Kivyachol, nods his head in heaven and says, Ah, Ashrei HaMelech, praiseworthy is the king. Shemekalsin oto bikach, that they praise him with such magnificent praise. Listen, they're praising my unbelievable name. Oy lahem lebanim. Woe is to the sons that were galu mishulchan avihem, that they were exiled off of the table of their father. Says Borei Olam, I want you back. This Pesach, there's going to be a moment that every single one of us, I, I'm sure of it, if we prepare properly right now, we're going to come to a Pesach and we're going to feel a certain moment that Borei Olam is... Tapping us on the shoulder and saying that tonight, the night of Pesach,
I came down in his entire Pamalia delay with his whole magnificent strew of angels. And he's going to come down and he's going to come to your Pesach Seder and he's going to listen to the way you tell over the story, to the heart that you put in it, to the detail that you pronounce and how you're going to get the children going and how it's going to move you. Are you going to do it with routine? Is it going to be rote? Is it going to be, ah, oh, we said that all these years, come on. Or is it going to be something that literally not just you're going to speak, but you're going to relive, remember, our holidays. Unlike the Goim, our holidays in Klal Yisrael are not commemorative. We don't commemorate something that took place many years ago. Just the opposite. It's a revelation every single year on that same day. Those magnificent kochot come back down into the world on the 15th day of this great month of Nisan, this incredible koach of Bechira, of Cherut, is going to come down to Klal Yisrael. And it's going to say, I want to free you again. The question is, do you want to leave? Do you remember Makat Choshech? Do you remember Makat Choshech, Rabotai? Do you know how many Jews passed away in Makat Choshech? I don't want to tell you the number. I'm in a good mood tonight. I have magnificent guests that drove from Jersey. To, I, I, I'm a little bit emotional just because they came out. Do you know how many Jews we lost in Makat Choshech? Why in Choshech? Because Hashem wanted to keep it a secret. It was too embarrassing to let anybody know, let alone the Egyptians, that there were Jews out there who just didn't want to leave. And Hashem says, if you don't want to leave, ah, Hashem wants to know who wants to leave. I'm coming down this year again to free you. I'm going to take you out of your personal Mitzrayim. I'm going to take you out of your trials, your tribulations, your addictions, your difficulties, because that is what Mitzrayim is about. Mitzrayim is Metzer Yam. It is the prison of the Yud Mem. Yud Mem is Gematria 50. It's the point of no return. It's the 50th level that, like the Arizal told us, if Hashem would have waited even seconds, Chas v'shalom, we could have fell to the Nun, the Nun Share Tum'ah, and it would have been the point of no return. So Hashem had to quickly, Bechipazon, quickly, He had to run us out of Egypt. But, don't make it look like we're escaping. No, no. So he had to make this unbelievable miracle so that it'll look like day in the middle of the night. So it doesn't look like we skipped down in the middle of the dark. It's the middle of the night. No, we walked out in bright sunshine. We had nothing to hide. But we had to get out quick. So quick that Mish'arotam Sirurot. Oh, yeah, I hear it already. When Jaya, when Rayach. Where? Whoa, 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 what's happening? Where? We gotta go! What do you mean, where? We gotta go! We waited long enough! Hashem says, who wants to go? Who is ready to go? Who's ready to leave? Are you ready to leave? Because if you're not ready to leave, then we're still in Choshech. Do you know that Choshech is another terminology for Galut? Do you know that a Jew that does not want to leave is always in Galut? But a Jew that wants to leave, that he's longing for Abba, that he's longing that maybe, Ulai Ulai, this is going to be the year, that this Pesach, I could finally, I could finally be Zoche to leave. Were we counting down in Corona? Could you imagine? We were living in a time that an American Jew couldn't go to Israel. Could you, I mean, did you ever think into that phenomenon? That we were restricted from going to the Kotel, from going to Marat Machpela, from going to Kever Rachel. We couldn't go if we wanted to. With all the protexia, with all the pull, we were ready to pay top dollar. Anybody, anybody just get me some sort of a something to get me in. And we couldn't go. Because the Gimaran Sanhedrin told us that Yerushalayim La'atid Lavo is going to be by invitation only. Do you know how you zochet to that invitation? You can't buy it with money. 
Do you know how you zocher with the invitation? You gotta want it. Says Bore Olam, if you're longing for me, if you're longing for Yerushalayim, if you're longing for Eretz Yisrael, then you're on the invite list. You're invited, and nothing could stop you from coming to me, says Abba. Nothing. So now Abba wants to know, who's on the invite list this Pesach? Who is longing for a Geula of Pesach? And here we are. On these amazing days, and we're going to talk tonight about this incredible revelation that all year we knock on the door to speak to Abba. That was the Rashi we mentioned, Amida, Somech Geulalet Fila. But now Hashem says, I want to be Somech myself to your Geula, to your Tefila. I'm coming down to you. And we're going to discuss this tonight. But before we go there, I want to, I want to share with you something that I think is novel, something incredible. Rindavid, do you mind if you take that clock and take it off the swarm? Thank you. Yeah, you can put it right here, Swan. You, you, yeah, give it to Jack. <clears throat> the Gemara tells us, This is another beauty piece that we've touched upon in the Kolel in the morning. That three times a day, we say, The wonderful Ashre Yoshre Betecha. Or in the terminology of Tehilim, it's really Tehilale David. <laughs> and the Gemara says, anyone that says Tehilale David three times a day, Muftah, that he's been Olam Haba. Now what is so magnificent about this chapter of Ashre? So at first the Gemara said, maybe because it's in the order of the Aleph Bet. But then the Gemara says, if that's the case, then really better, we should have said the chapter of Kufyutet. Because that is the entire chapter in the order of Aleph Bet. And not only that, each letter gets eight psukim. So if you say Kuf Yutet, you actually said a tefillah in the order of Aleph Bet, but each letter eight times. So it's kind of you said it eight times. And we know how special the number eight is. It's Lema'ala Midar Chateva. So it makes sense how that would be the doorway to the Lema'ala, to the Muftah Lo Shehu Ben Olam Abba. But then the Gemara says, no, that's not what it is. Ashrei has something else that's magnificent. And that is the incredible pasuk. So the next time somebody asks you, what do you do for a living? And the answer is, I pray for a living. Everything else is just the after effects. I pray for a living. You see, because in that Ashrei, three times a day, I say, Poteach et Yadecha. That's the Pasuk of Parnasa. That's the Pasuk of the Shefa. That's the Pasuk that when a Jew properly is Mechaven, he can be Zochet to unbelievable Shefa. Bamakom. It's as if the angels are standing over you and waiting to see what is he going to do with the Pasuk today. And depending on what you do with that Pasuk, depends on what type of bins of incredible shefa and blessing that they pour over his head at the time that he's standing there. I don't know if you ever went to a Svaradi shul by us. We stand there, you see, so <laughs> we have our head, yes, <laughs> our heads are open like this. We'll take the whole bin. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take it. We have our hands open. And we say, Bore Olam, please, we're opening our hands down here. You open your hands up there. Poteach et yadecha. Open up your hands. And satiate all living things by giving them what they need through your will to their will. Now that's the simple shot in the Pasuk. But then we close our eyes and we start to think and we're mechaven. Ah! yadecha. The holy books, the rabbis have told us that poteach et yadecha actually has in it the three keys of wealth. Now, this is something we touched upon this past Monday night. And I'll tell you the reason why I'm revisiting this. I'm revisiting this because I got so many emails. After two nights in those class of Birkat Ilanot, I, I'm telling you, Chaim, I know what to do with myself. I, I legit, I, I, I emails and, 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 you know, Marco Ballas got all the WhatsApps and the Shula website got, I got bombarded with this. So, could you, could you expound 
on the topics of the end of the class of Poteach et Yadecha and the three keys of wealth and how it works with Berkata Ilanot and how that's the skeleton key, the master key that's going to open up this Pesach for all the Shefa, the Ten Lechai Lokim. I was like, wow. And, and it was like a lot of them. So I said, you know what? Maybe we can dedicate a certain aspect to tonight's class, clarify Monday night's run, and open up this idea because this is really a Pesach idea. The three keys of wealth. So we think we're mechaven at that time. The first key of wealth. And then, of course, there is the Samach Aleph Lamid, which is the Gematria equivalent of Pe Aleph Yud, which is 91, by the way. Yes. And then we have the third key, and that is the Sofet Tevot of Poteach et Yadecha, and that is Chatach. By the way, that's the only name of the three letter names you're allowed to say out as the way we just said it Chatach. Pe Aleph Yud should be said as Pe Aleph Yud. Samach Aleph Lamid should be said as Samach Aleph Lamid, not pronouncing it, but chatach you may. And there's a whole reason for this beyond the scope. But these are the three keys. We were just introduced to the three keys that open the vault of heaven. Poteach et yadecha, pe'alef yud, samech alef lamet, sofet tevot, chatach, umazbia is the exact gematria of chatach. So the moment you're mechaven, these three keys on poteach et yadecha, it opens up the vault of heaven. And suddenly the shefa starts pouring down on the person. Umazviya, chatach, Hashem, you satiate all living things. My parnasah is from you. Ani bayadaim shelcha, Abba. My parnasah is bayadaim shelcha. My shefa is in your hands. I'm in your hands. Kagamul ale imo. I am in your hands like a young infant that's in his mother's arms. And I have no worry because I'm in the best hands in the world. Did you ever see a baby that was worried when it's going to get its next feeding, where it's going to get its food from? No, he's in mommy's arms. Did you ever see a baby that was worried about where the clothing's going to come from? Who's going to change him? Who's going to clean him? Who's going to put him to bed? Who's going to wake him up? He's in mom's arms. Poteach et yadecha, Abba. I'm in your hands. You're the one that gives parnasah to everyone. From the smallest to the greatest. It's all you, Hashem. Umazbiya, you satiate. L'cholchai ratzon. And then I take a look at the last words of this pasuk. Umazbiya l'cholchai ratzon. Now here's something that most people don't know. Everything I told you till now, yadua. Says the great Reb Shamashin Rafal Hirsch, Zechet Tzadik Lebracha. That there's a secret, a secret at the end of this Pasuk. That if people would know the secret to the end of the Pasuk, they would find an incredible Biracha and Shefa and wealth beyond what they could imagine. He says, he says that everyone is so uh, focused on the beginning of the Pasuk and grabbing those keys that they don't realize that grabbing the key is not enough. You need the end of the Pasuk to be able to really tap in to the incredible blessing in Shefa of Shamayim. Really? Wow, what did I miss? What's at the end of the Pasuk? I don't see any keys at the end of the Pasuk. Pay all of you, Tzamech Alef Lamed, Chatach, beginning of the Pasuk. End of the Pasuk simply says, Umas Bia Lechol Chai Ratzon. You satiate all living things by your will, or their will, depending on how you re read the words of the Pasuk. Says Rav Shem Shemfal Hirsch, I'm about to drop a million dollar tip, and this is something that should literally reprogram the way we say this Pasuk three times a day. Says Rav Shem Shem, pause, do you know how God satiates all living things? Ratzon. He gives them this blessing called Ratzon in the eyes of everything else. He blesses the person with Chen, with Ratzon. 
that we should find Chen Be'ene Elokim Be'adam. We should find Ratzon and Chen in the eyes of other people. Did you ever have it that there was a guy you worked with, and even though he might not have been the best price or the best deal on, on the block, but you went with him because you liked him. There was something about this guy I liked. I like this guy. I want to do business with this guy. But he's not the cheapest. And you might be able to get a deal better somewhere else. No, no, but I like this guy. What is that? That's Chen. That's Ratzon. My father-in-law, Shem bless him, he told me in his days in Continental Camera, they used to tell, they used to tell his older brother, Joe, right? Joe something, they used to tell him, they, used, they nicknamed him Joe Camera. Because that's what he did, right? In this community. <laughs> they nicknamed him Joe Camera. My father-in-law told me that when, when, his brother, when his brother Joe would go out to the craziest places to sell cameras in these clip stores all over the United States, we're talking about, you know, in the 60s, 70s, you know, he says, when he came into the store, they would say, Joe, Joe, give us your cameras. We want your cameras. Because for some reason, every time we put your cameras on the shelves, they fly off. They sell quicker than anybody else's camera. Joe, we want your cameras. That's Chen. That's Ratzon. Let me tell you this secret. This is literally a secret that can rewrite our tefillah and our blessings. This is unbelievable. The great Sod of Rav Sham Shrenfal Hirsch. Listen to this. He says, and, and, and between me and you, you remember recently the fidget spinners? I mean, really? Do you know how many of those things I have in the back of some junk drawer today? Then it was the hottest item. It was like you couldn't get it if you wanted. And there were kid people way back ordered. It was back ordered. They had to wait six months. They couldn't make them fast enough. And then the knockoffs, and they weren't as good as the original. And, and people were going, it was a fad. But at the time, it was king. It was flying off the shelves. What's the shot? Because at that time, Hashem flicked on the switch and put the flashlight of Chen on this product. And everyone that saw this product was like, wow, I need to get me a fidget spinner. I, I, how did I go through life up until this point without a fidget spinner? Do you know how many products out there today, at the time of its height, it was a craze. It was a stampede. Do you remember the Wii? Wii Wii. You remember the Wii? Do you remember these products? I mean, I, forgive me, I, I know I'm going to go back. I'm going to tell you the story that you don't want to hear. But okay, it shows a little bit of the age. But you know, Bar Hashem, we, we take pride in the, in the good years that Bar Hashem we had together. Do you remember the Cabbage Patch Kids? Come on. Did you, do you remember that era? I remember I was a young boy. My sister, Devary, it was like she was enamored. And, and, and her friend came over one day and she had one, a Cabbage Patch Kid. And I was like, I was thinking to myself as, you know, I was thinking like, well, I, I just got to see one of these because everyone's going crazy about them. And I said, Devary, can I see it? And she pulls it out. I was like, it was the ugliest thing I've ever seen. It, 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 it wasn't at all anything that I would understand why anyone would go crazy about. But Hashem decided to put Chen and Ratzon on this Cabbage Patch doll. And the whole world wanted that doll. Oh, do I have to tell you a story about this? My, my, my sister drove my mother crazy. She needed a Cabbage Patch doll. And my mother calls up Toys R Us, Aleim Shalom, and, and she says to Toys R Us, listen, you know, uh, they said, ma'am, I'm sorry, uh, there's a six month waiting list, and we'll put one of the Cabbage Patch dolls up for adoption for your daughter. What's her name? And she gives her the name, and what's this? And they start giving the whole, and they fill it out from beginning to end, and they had to wait six months for this Cabbage Patch doll. And, and guys, I want to tell you, I remember the day that we got the phone call. I remember the day. I mean, it was like, La Yehudim, Haita, Ora, Vesimha, Vesason, Vikar. 
we got the phone call and my mother was like hopping and bopping. She was so happy for my sister. My sister came home. She didn't know what to do with herself. She was skipping around the house. My baby is here. It's like, and I'm thinking like, what is going on with these people? We jumped into the old station wagon. You remember the old station wagon? <laughs> ah, you remember the old station wagon? It was a Dodge Aspen station wagon. You know, the ones where you sit in the back and you sit backwards facing out the back window. Ah, I forget, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, we jumped into the station wagon and my mother ripped out to Toys R Us on Flappers Avenue. And we come into the store and we say, we're here. We're here to pick up the Cabbage Patch doll. And my, my sister was like hopping and bopping. And they said, uh, ma'am, you're going to have to go outside the store, back into your car, and drive around to the back of the store. We have the adoption center in the back of the store. The adoption center is in the back of the store. We go out, we drive around to the back of Toys R Us. They had set up an adoption center with a window and there was a nurse dressed in white with a white little beanie on her head and she sat there and we came up and we said we have we gave her the you know the slip and she says oh so where's the new mother and i'm looking at my mother like what's going on? really and she says Shh, let your sister enjoy this my sister walked up and the nurse says, you're the new mom. So here's the adoption papers. She had to fill it out, write her age, write her name. And she says, one minute, I'm going to go get your new baby. And she goes to the back. And she comes out and she hands my mother wrapped up in this blanket. I'm, I'm telling you, this was too much. And I'm peeking in the back of this adoption center. And they had a bunch of little bassinets with these little babies inside that was the nursery and they brought the ba they brought the baby out and brought it out to the front and she brought it to my my daughter my sister and my sister's holding it mamish oh, she's holding it and it's wrapped and then she opens it up to look at the baby <laughs> and it turns out <laughs> i have to say this the right way it turned out that it was an abde i, I, I don't know what to say it in english and and and, and she looks at it and she says, Ma. And I looked and I said, Mazel Tov. <laughs> Would you believe it? A year later, that Cabbage Patch doll was somewhere in the garage. What happened? What made the world go crazy about that product? What made the world go crazy about the fidget spinner? About the Wii? about certain games of Nintendo over the years that came out that they had a back order for six months. What made the world go crazy about certain products, certain fads, when they came out? And the answer is, says Rabsham Shunafal Hirsch, that is the secret of Ratzon. It's the secret of Chen. Hashem gives Chen and Ratzon to certain people, to certain things. And at that time, it's unbelievable, unbelievable how the people look at the person or the product and they say, I want to be friends with this guy. I don't even know his name. A guy can walk into a room and people turn around and say, who is that guy? That's Chen. It's a tremendous beracha. I want you to take a good look at the psukim of Yosef HaTzadik. It says over there that when he first got to Egypt, Ishmat Sliach. But then later on, take a good look. When he was thrown into the jail and he was running the entire jail, it says that Hashem blessed him that he found chen in the eyes of everyone that saw him. What's the difference between the Ishmat Sliach and then later on the chen? Is there a difference? And the answer is yeah. Ishmat Sliach means that whatever you do succeeds. Chen is that people run to you to do it for you. They're in love with you. They're enamored by you, by your product, by your presence. It's an incredible gift. Says Rav Shamshul Fol Hirsch, 
I'm going to give you the secret. How do you get chen? How do you get ratzon in the eyes of people? Then when people look at you, they just, they just, they just want to throw blessings on you. He says, here's the pasuk. This is the real secret behind the pasuk of incredible blessing and wealth. Poteach et yadecha. Yes, you got the three keys. But don't stop there. Umas lecholchai. You know how he satiates all living things? Ratzon. He allows them to find ratzon in the eyes of all other people. And that blesses the person with a fantastic blessing. More than just money, more than just popularity. There's a certain love that people have for this guy and they just don't know why. How do I tap into that? Says Rav Shantral Fal Hirsch, when you're mechaven on the pasuk, you think to yourself, poteach et yadecha, pe'aluf yud, samech aluf lamed, chatach, okay, I got the three keys. Now, umas bia, Hashem, you satiate, gematria chatach, Lecholchai, pause. How does he satiate all living things? Ratzon. Hashem, please. Please send me tremendous chen and ratzon. Be'ene koro'ai. Be'enecha u be'ene koro'ai. Shetimsachem b'sechel tov. Be'ene elokim ve'adam. That is one of the greatest blessings a person can get. This unbelievable concept of chen. And here it is in this pasuk. So let's take a look at the pasuk. I have this amazing concept of chen at the end of the pasuk. I have the three keys of wealth in the beginning of the pasuk. Now let me tell you something about Pesach that you never heard before. <laughs> Pesach has both. Pesach has the three keys of wealth. And Pesach has the amazing chen because on the night of Egypt, when we left that night, what happened? Hashem begged Moshe Rabbeinu, please, please tell the people to go to the Egyptians and ask them for all their gold and all their silver. Because I'm worried about the old man, Yedidi, Ahuvi as God called Abraham Avinu. I promised him that when your children come out of Egypt, after the terrible bondage, after the terrible She'abud Mitzrayim, which was a mini holocaust, make no mistake, Mitzrayim was something beyond. I beg you, please ask them to take all the gold and all the silver, because I promised their great-grandfather that I would deliver them with Rechush Gadol. So that night, you know what happened? Claudius went knocking on the doors of the Egyptians, and Hashem gave tremendous chen be'ene ha'am. And at that night, the Egyptians fell in love with us. They fell in love with us to the extent that they were pouring on us all their gold and all their silver, and we walked out with such a rechush gadol. <laughs> we didn't have enough donkeys to carry the money. You imagine that? So on the night of Egypt, two things happened. Cherut, but also Chen. So let's take a look at this. I got three keys of wealth, and I got this fantastic Chen that comes down every year on the night of Pesach to the Jewish people as the original night that we left Egypt. Poteach et yadecha. Rashi Tevot, pe'alef yud. Rashi Tevot, Equivalent, Samech Aleph Lamed. Sofet Tevot Chatach. So let's take a look at those three keys. Pe Aleph Yud, Samech Aleph Lamed, Chatach. What are they, Rashi Tevot? Pesach! The essence of Pesach. The Rashi Tevot create the name of this holiday. It's not just that Hashem leaped over the houses of the Egyptians. On this night, we can leap over all the obstacles, break out of all the impediments, and reach a biracha of shefa of ad bali dai. That's why this is the night that Yitzchak Avinu gave Yaakov Avinu the most epic blessings of history on this night, on the night that the three keys were hanging on the head of Yaakov Avinu. 
And the blessing he gave him was, Vitem Lechaylokim, Mital HaShamayim, Mishmane HaAretz, Rov Dagam Etirosh, Yavdu Chamim, Mishtachavu Lecha Bnei Lumim. All the most amazing blessings of history were given on this night, because this night all three keys are open. The vault is hanging open. It's just waiting. It's waiting for you to be Zocheh. It's waiting for us to be Zocheh to the Shefa and to the Chen. Be'enelo Kim Ve'adam. Because on that night, Hashem comes down to us because we found such chen in His eyes. He's so in love with us on the night of Pesach. And in a minute we're going to hear a certain piece from the Tiferet Shalomo that Hashem tells the angels, let's go down. I want you to hear with me all the amazing shirot v'tishbachot of how my children are going to praise and tell over the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim and all the miracles I did for them and all the hakarat tov that they have for me. Do you know what it means that someone was blessed with chen? I want to tell you something deep. I'll say it and drop it. And what you do with it, God bless you. When a person gets chen from Hashem, it means... That God is looking at you. When Hashem looks at a person with love, it completely mirrors off of him that shine to the eyes of people. And that's why we say, And then it bounces back to Adam. What man sees on the chen of a person's face is only the rebound. It's only the echo. I was in Eretz Yisrael this past, uh, this past January, midwinter for a few days. I tell you, I counted down. I counted down the days through Corona of two years. Just to be like, I, 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 you know, I don't want to get emotional, but... I davened my heart out. Abba, please, give me another shot. Let me get back there again. Let me get back there again. Give me just another Vatikim by the Kotel. You know, let, let me just go Kever Rachel again for a few tears. Let me go up north. You know, just give me another shot. I, wa I want to jump into the Ari's uh, Mikveh. I, I want to go to the Rajbi. I want to stand by the Rambam. I want to stand next to Reb Meir and stand in between the two pieces that says Aneni, Aneni, and scream, Abba, Aneni! I, 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 I counted it down. I waited, I waited, I davened and davened and pleaded. And finally, Borei Olam was Marachem. And he opened it up. And we were able to go. So when I was there in Eretz Yisrael, I, I tried my best to use as much of it as I could for the best that I could. So I was lucky enough. I wanted to Get a beracha by the great tzaddik, Rebbe Fala Buchatzera, Shalita Amea Vesri. Big tzaddik. And many times I, I, I came to him for blessings, and his blessings are, are unbelievable. They're like lightning bolts. So I wanted to get to him. I didn't know how, because we were there very few days, and I was bouncing around. Oh, my wife. Oh, oh what I did to her. Oh, oh and Mamish, we were running from spot to spot. Up north and back in Tveria and Meron and Tzvat and the rain that was coming down. I have to show you the clips. The rain that was coming down that day in Tzvat when we went to the Arizal's Mikveh was so heavy that it was literally a waterfall, a waterfall that was coming down the famous steps that led down to the Ari. Now I'm talking about you needed a kayak to make your way down those steps. And, and my wife said to me, you came all the way here. What are you going to do? And I said, that's exactly it. I came all the way here. You know what I'm going to do. I'm getting down these steps. One way or another. I don't know. Surfboard. Down these Hawaii 250. Oh, forget it. I'm going down these steps. One way or another. She says, how are you going to do it? It's a second on the You get swept away. I'm talking about a current. There was a current of water. It was like a little river going down these steps. So we jumped back into the car. We drove back down to the bottom of the mountain. 
We drove around, because these days you can actually drive around. We drove around on Repinchas Ben Yair seven times. I was driving and say, Yosheb is set at It was the coolest thing in the world. I never thought I could do that. I went around literally 22 miles an hour, going around Yosheb is set going around Pinchas Ben Yair. And then I told my wife, just give me a half hour. She says, listen, this is what we came for. You got it. Go ahead. And I walked up the mountain. And when you come from bottoms up, who do you bump into midway? Maram Bet Yosef. And I, I, I begged Maram Bet Yosef, give us Siata Deshmaya. We'll be able to start the Halachot program. We just started a Yerucha program in the morning at 7 o'clock. We're doing Choshen Mishpat with our guys. Would you believe it? Our guys are doing Choshen Mishpat. They just finished. We just made a siyum. We brought everyone out to Bordeaux. We just made a siyum on the entire Hilchot Tzedakah. Right, this is not Choshen Mishpat yet, but it was the introduction. But the entire Hilchot Tzedakah and the entire Hilchot Maaser. We made the siyum. The Dayanim from Lakewood came down. They tested all the guys. It was a major bechina. They tested all the guys. And at the end, they gave them certificates of completion of these parts of Shulchan Aruch. And now we started Kinyanim. Now we started Choshem Mishpat. I said, Maran, we need help. We got guys that are ripping through Choshem Mishpat. And they want to know what you have to say. Be'omek. Be'omek. And they're being tested on it. Help us. We need Siyat HaDishmaya. Be a Melus Yaisha for us. And then after that, I made my way a little bit further up. And as I'm making my way up the mountain, I walk, I walk right by Hannah and her seven sons. Uh, guys, okay, it'll be easy, does it? I waited a few years until I finally had kids, a child. It wasn't easy. You know, I, I just spoke recently for Boni Olam by uh, yeah. I'm you with me. Uh, for me to, to, to hold back the tears on that speech, to describe to them what we went through waiting for a child and all the doctors we had to go through. La Elena, we should never know. Be marachim on people that are waiting for children. It's an agony. And I stopped by Hanan of Seven Zazana. I dove in my heart out. I said, Hana, you gave up your children for Borei Olam. You gave up your children for Borei Olam. And then after this, we walked by the Bat Ayin. The Bat Ayin's kever, you have to kind of almost get down on hands and knees to crawl into the cave because he's, he's buried inside a cave on the side of that mountain. We crawled, literally, I'm talking about torrential rain, but we crawled inside the cave and, and we stood by the Bat Ayin. He was once the great Rav. He was once the great Baal Mofet of the great rabbis of Tzfat. And the promises that the Bat'ayin made for people that learn his Svarim and they give a Su'udan, his yard site. Wow! We were walking through history there. Finally, I made it up to the top. I got to the Arizal, the Ramak, Ramoshe Cordovero, the Balachado, the Balachado, the, the Ari himself went into the Mikveh. I mean, I was so worked up from that walk up to the, because I'm not, not exactly in shape anymore. So worked up when I came up through the snake path. I came up to the top. I was sweating. Kaze, I jumped into the Ari. I went down 26 times. And it's sub-degree temperature. I don't know if you remember how cold the Ari is, how cold it is. And I said, I, I was so worked up. My adrenaline was running. I was like a cuckoo man. But when you waited for it, you're going to let it go? When you counted down two years to be there, you're going to let it go? Why? Because there's a, there, there, there's a challenge? You got to fight for it. Hashem wants to know who's fighting for me. Is there anybody left out there who's fighting for me, says Hashem? Where's my fighters? Where's the guys that want to chpatlahem on kavod shamayim, that they're ready to go out and wage a war for Klal Yisrael? But those are the guys that are in season right now. You ever heard of fruit that's in season? Those guys are in season in this month of Nisan. Because those fighters know how special this month is. I said to my wife, I, I made it to the Ariel. I can't believe, how am I going to find River Fal Abu Chatzera? How am I going to find him? I don't have time. I have to go back to Yerushalayim. She said, don't worry. You got the Ari, you got the Mikveh, you got Chana, you got, you got big stuff. Dovi, don't, you know, as I know, but... I'm a little crazy when it comes to this, and I, I want to get the next shot. She said, what do you want to go to next? I said, let's go to, let's go to Rajbi. 
Let's go to Rashbi. I spent two years, Shavuot night, with over 150 guys, learning the sugya on the Flamid. Gimel Amud Bet in Shabbat, Be'iyun, of the Rashbi. We were Makabal Taira on that sugya of the Rashbi, two years, two Shavuot. So I, I, I want to go to the Rashbi, I told her. I want to, I want to tell her that, I want to tell him that I was Makabal Taira on your sugya, two years with, with our guys. She said, okay, let's go to Meron. So we drove to Meron. As I'm driving into Meron, I'm coming up the path on the way up to the Rajbi's Kever. I get a phone call. Uh, Rabbi Ben Shushan said, yeah, Shalom. This is Yaakov Krieger. Oh, Shalom, Rabbi Yaakov. How's everything? He says, Baruch Hashem. He says, you know, I just got a hold of the Rav. I just got a hold of Rabbi Fal Abu Hatzera. And he told me that he decided to stay an extra two days in his shul. In his Bet Medrash, that was just built down the block from the Rajbi's Kever. So if you happen to get to Meron, he would love to see you. Don't go to Ashdod, go to Meron. I said, go to Meron? Go to Meron? Go to Meron? Honey, I'm in Meron. I'm, I'm, I'm 20 feet away from the Rajbi's Kever. He says, okay, quick, make a right. I, I literally on two wheels. I'm here. I screeched. Right, I went straight down the road, and at the end of the road, there's this magnificent, beautiful shawl that Rafal Abu Hatzar built. And he has his kolel there. Beautiful kolel. I walked inside and I said, I can't, this is that. Hello, hello. I, this, is, this is too much. I was picturing myself, this is, this is wild. And my wife says, Only you, only you, only you. <laughs> only, no, 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 only you, only, only you. This is ridiculous. I, I'm, not, I'm not even telling my parents when we come home, they're not going to believe it. And I, and I said, Okay, let me go in. And I came inside the shul, and Rabbi Fall was sitting in the back room alone. No lines, no Kabbalat Panim. <laughs> this, is, this is crazy. And I came in and I kissed the rabbi's hand so many times. And listen to what I asked the rabbi. After the Berachot, of course, I said, Haraf, please, tell me. You and I both know the incredible, incredible gift from Hashem that He blesses certain people with chen. I said, I'm asking you for a bracha for chen that I could teach Torah. Give me a minute, sorry. I'm not asking it for the wealth. I just want to be able to find the chen in the eyes of people to move them enough that they'll want to learn, that they'll see how sweet it is. That's why I'm asking for it. So he said to me, you want the secret of chen? I said, yeah. What's the secret of chen? Listen to what he says. He says, chen works where when a person is completely focused on Hashem, then Hashem is completely focused on him. I said, please, Harab, be Mazbir. What does that mean? What does that mean? He says, what that means is, when you come into shul in the morning, you're not going around shaking hands, giving out pens and kissing babies. You go straight to your seat as if nobody exists but Bore Olam. And you take out your Koracha, your Talit Tefillin, and you put it on with unbelievable awe, and then you quickly open up the seat door and you look at the words, and you mechaven on the words, and you have Kavana on the words, and you look at nothing but your seat door. From the beginning of davening, to the end of davening, and you basically are fixated on only Bore Olam and nothing else. Lo ma'anyenli if the house is falling down. Lo ma'anyenli who walked into shul. Lo ma'anyenli who walked out of shul. Lo ma'anyenli if the chazan is going fast or slow. Lo ma'anyenli how long the amida took. I am fixated on Hashem. Shiviti Hashem. He says, if you are mechavin and concentrate only on Hashem, on who you're speaking to and what you're doing, then Hashem will be completely kiviachol, fixated on you. And at that moment, you begin to shine. 
He says, that's the secret of Chen. He says, when it comes to Avodat HaKodesh, fixate yourself and be mechaven only on a... He says, when you sit down to a Gemara, he says, look at the words. Go into the words. Go into the Gemara. Don't read the Gemara. Enter. Go into the Gemara. Look at the words, line by line. Talk it over to yourself. Don't let your eyes fly. Don't let your mind sway. You're learning with a chavruta. It's just you and him. It's as if the world stopped. The clock doesn't exist. Everything else kind of... And it's just you and Borei Olam. You and Abba. And as you look at him and just fixate yourself, he looks back at you. And suddenly, you have fantastic chen. Again, here's the secret. I have a new pshat for you. Shetimsa chen be'ene elokim. Be'ene elokim. Be'ene elokim. Fixate yourself on be'ene elokim. And gewalt, you'll shine in front of Adam. And that's what Rebbefol told me. And, and I agree, it's not simple. You know, our heads are, <laughs> you know, you know how it is. But to work on that. Umazbiya, you know how he satiates? L'cholchai, all living things? Ratzon. He gives them ratzon and chen in the eyes of everybody else. That everyone suddenly sees a beauty, a shine on this guy. A beauty, a shine on this product. And they don't know why, but they need to buy a Cabbage Patch Kid. Makes no sense! Did you look at the thing? No, but it's magnificent. I need to have one. Six month waiting lists. Fidget spinners. I can't live without it. But it's in the back of your junk drawer now. What happened from then till now? Yeah. Then Hashem shined the light of Chen on it. Everyone wanted it. And then Hashem decided, time is up. Light off. And now? It's like my Rebbe once told me years ago. He says, you want to hear what Chen is about? He says, could you imagine taking a bunch of guys and lining them up against a wall in a room and shutting out the light? Shut the lights. Now you stare at every face of those guys lined up against the wall. You could barely make out who is who because it's pitch black. But you could see a certain feature here, a certain feature there, and kind of try to make out who is who down the line in that dark room. And he says, just then, take a flashlight. Walk up to one guy from the whole row in darkness and flash the light just on his face. Now look at him. In the pact of the line of everyone else. It's like everyone else faded out into the background. And all eyes are on you, kid. All eyes are on this person. Because he has such chen. Ben Elohim Adam. Says Rav Shan Shunufal Hirsch, you could be mechaven every day, three times a day. Umazbi alechochai. Pause. How does Hashem say it? Ratzon. Hashem, please. I'm asking you. Please give me ratzon and chen be'enecha, be'enecha. Because that's the secret, says Rebbe Fall. Be'enecha, u be'enecho ro'ai. Comes the night of Pesach, and we have this unbelievable opportunity. It's the night that the Jewish people were given chen in the eyes of the entire world, and the goyim, and the Egyptians, and that's how we walked out, with the rechush gadol. The chen that you can be zochet to on the night of Pesach is unbelievable. And in a minute, I'll tell you why. But look what we have coming at us. We have the night of the three keys of wealth. The three keys. Pe Aleph Yud, Samech Aleph Lamed, Chatach, Rashi Tevot, Pesach. Rashi Tevot, Poteach Et Yadecha. But we also have something very special. We have Hashem telling us that tonight I'm fixated on you. Wow. So this past Monday, we spoke about the incredible concept of Birkat Eilanot. And how when a person properly goes out and does Birkat Eilanot, the El Yoraba and Reish Chaf Aleph and Reish Chaf Vav tells us that the blessing that a person gets from Birkat Eilanot is the famous Pasuk. Re'eh, Beni, Re'ah Chasadeh, Hashem, 
Reach Bini, here's the Pasuk. Reach Bini Kereach Hasadeh, Asher Ber Asher Bericho Hashem. The smell of the field, but over there it means Gan Eden. The mitzvah of the field, Birkata Ilanot. Reach Bini Kereach Hasadeh, Asher Bericho Hashem. What's the next Pasuk? Vi ten lecha elokim, vi tal hashamayim, vishmane haaretz. When Yaakov Avinu walks into Yitzchak, dressed up in the clothing of Esav, and he's coming to get the greatest blessings of history, Yaakov Avinu smells something special on Yaakov Avinu. Yitzchak, excuse me, spell, smells something special on Yaakov Avinu. And what does he say? Reach b'ni'i, kereach hasadeh. Says the El Yorabah, you want that smell? You want that scent on you? The scent of Gan Eden that Yitzchak smelled on Yaakov, that spurred him, that kind of kicked off the great blessing of Yitain L'chai Elohim. You also come into that night with the Reach Hasadeh on you. How? Berkat Ilanot. So says the Elie Rabba. That's amazing. But there's another key. There's another key that could open up the incredible Shefa and the, and the unbelievable blessings. And when I say blessings and Shefa, I don't mean money just. Whatever a person needs. You know what we need? We need to finally find the Chen in the eyes of Abba. That when he comes down to us this Pesach, he doesn't leave us. Abba, we were sent away from your table. But you're not going to be sent away from my table. You're going to come down to my Pesach table. You're going to hear the Shirot V'tishbachot. You're going to hear the Hallel. You're going to hear Sipur Yitziat Mitzrayim. You're going to hear the little kids saying Manishtana. You're going to hear the Avadim Ayinu from the beginning of the Gnai until the final Shevach of the great Yitziat Mitzrayim. With all the trimmings, with all the details, with all the Medrashim, with all the miracles. Abba! I want you to stay with me on my table. I want a Gula. We want Klal Yisrael. Desperately needs Gula. We need already a real redemption. But I told you from the beginning, it's only if you want it. Hashem is not going to be goel of people who don't want to leave. Those people remained in Makat Choshech. Choshech is Galut. And as long as you're in Choshech and you don't want to leave, Galut is where we remain. And take a look how long, how long this Galut was. We already, according to the great rabbis, we already passed all the kitzim, we could have been out of here long ago. And part of the problem is sinat hinam, the reason why we got in, we still didn't fix. And that's why we send out the shmirat alashon every single day to say, Klal Yisrael, come on! It's Nisan! Remember what got us into this. Remember what's going to get us out. But there's another factor. And that is Hashem wants to see who is longing to go home. The American dream is no longer much of a dream left. It's not the place we grew up in 20, 30 years ago. It's not. It's not. Come on. We know this. Things are not what, what it was when we were growing up. Once upon a time, the land that flowed milk and money, this was a wonderful place. And it's a land of chesed. And we have tremendous hakarat to the United States. We flourished. We did. We flourished. Tyra flourished. Chesed. Yeah, you, you, could you imagine the chesed? We have a gemach for toothpicks in Lakewood. A gemach for toothpicks. We have chesed. We have every organization. We have it all. And we were allowed to do so. With a certain freedom that was given to us that Klal Yisrael never had before. So we have tremendous hakarat to the United States. But he gives man. He gives man. He gives man to go home. Hashem wants to know who wants to go. Are you really longing for a Geulah? This is the night that we can get tremendous blessing and chen and a redemption. There's another mafteach that could unlock the entire night. And with this I want to close. The Tiferet Shalomo writes that when Moshe Rabbeinu comes to Paro and he tells him that God is coming tonight at midnight, he switched one letter. Hashem told him, Bahatzot Laila. Moshe Rabbeinu said, 
כחצות לילה, או כחצות לילה. So there's a famous Tosafot in Masechet Berachot that wanted to know, Moshe Rabbeinu, how was he allowed to change the word of God? Tosafot went with this incredible concept of the, uh, the jokers of the generation that might come along and try to say, ha ha, God was off by a, a minute or two. Take a look on my sundial. Mm -hmm. I have midnight. And where's God? He said he's coming exactly at midnight. So for that minute or two, there might be a Chilu Hashem. And they might start laughing at Hashem. So Moshe Rabbeinu, very strategically, decided to switch the letter from Bahatzot, exactly midnight, to Kachatzot, around midnight. So even those guys could not say, Ha! Look at that! The, Jew of jo the Jewish God said he's coming at midnight? On my watch, it's midnight. Where is he? Ask the Benish Chai, but uh, a minute later, when God actually comes and brings Makat Bechorot, who's going to get the last laugh? So who cares for that minute that they left? But Lamaisa, we know that Hashem's going to come at the real midnight. So if their watch was ahead by a minute, they'll get a laugh for a minute. But after that minute, who's going to get the last laugh? I mean, it's over. Who cares? Says the Ben Ishchai and Ben Yoyada that Moshe Rabbeinu was so careful with the love of God and his honor that he was ready to switch Hashem's words to even avoid a one minute Chilul Hashem. Hmm. That's amazing. <laughs> a 60 second Chilul Hashem. Moshe Rabbeinu was ready to switch Hashem's word just to avoid even the most minute of a, even a, even a 60 second Chilul Hashem. That will be disproved. But it doesn't matter. For those 60 seconds you're laughing at Abba, I'm not going to have it. He switches it up. Says the Tiferet Shlomo, another pshat in Kachatzot Laila, and he brings you the Zohar HaKadosh. Listen to this. The Zohar HaKadosh writes that every night at Chatzot, Hashem goes out Kiviachol to Gan Eden. He enters Gan Eden and he's Mishta'asheya. Beautiful word. I don't even know if there's a good English translation to that word. But he's Mishta'asheya with the Tzadikim in Gan Eden. He's Mitayel with them. He, so to speak, uh, uh, enjoys with them. On every night. On Chatzot Laila. Says Moshe Rabbeinu, but not tonight. Not tonight. Tonight, says Moshe to Paro, like the way God goes into Gan Eden every night and hangs with the great Sadiqim Kibiachol. Tonight, he's coming to Egypt to hang with us. Wow. A whole new Mahalach. Hashem says, Tonight, the night of Pesach, I'm not going to Gan Eden. I'm not going to the Tzadikim. I'm coming to you. I'm coming down to your table with the whole Pamalia Shomala, with all the legions of heaven, with all the, the myriads of trillions of angels, and he's coming down to me and you. You know, we get so excited at the end of the said there when we open up the door for Eliyahu and Avi. <laughs> and we still have, we still have, we still have our young kids standing by the coast of Elio watching. I think I saw a sip. I think I saw it move. Oh my gosh, it went down a drop. He, he was here. He was here. Legit, he was here. You have to wait till the end of the seder to get excited. Do you know who comes at the beginning of the seder? You know who your masmin? Do you know? And, and, huh, if we had the eyeglasses, if we only had the eyeglasses, if we had the ability of sight to see the boreolam, behold, pamalia shtile, his whole myriad of angels came down to my table. And he's listening. Let me hear. Let me hear. Let me hear Agada. Let me hear Agada. Let me hear. Let me hear your take on the story of my miracles. Let me hear your take on the Medrashim, on the details, on the incredible passion, the Midah Keneged Midah, that I hit them with every Makkah. Come, come, let me hear it. How the ten, ma ten Makot correspond to the ten Ma'amarot that the world was created with from the beginning of creation, showing Paro that there was no one who created the world other than Hashem. From every detail, from Shamayim to Aretz, to the creepy crawlers, to the most incredible creations. I want to hear it from you. 
Let me hear it, my son. Let me hear, let me hear you be mekalis. Ot, let, let me hear the beauty. And he sits and he drinks your words. He drinks your words. And then there's a guy at the table that says, ah, we said that last year. And Borel looks at the guy and says, who cares? But last year when you said it, you didn't get a geula, did you? So maybe this year, say it right. Maybe this year, say it with hearts. Say it, act it out. When we grew up as kids with my father, we used to come to the table like real Moroccans with, with Jalabir. We were leaving Egypt that night. No, no. This had nothing to do with 11223 or 12230 or whatever. No, we left the zip code long ago. We came downstairs in white. It was like the Ashkenazi Kittel. But by us, there were Jalabir, long, beautiful Jalabir. And we sat at the table like kings. Mamish, like kings. Like kings. And my father had this magnificent car, a huge car that would sit on, on legs. And the Moroccans, they pick up the car and they sing the Bibhilu as they go around from head to head. And then at the end, my father says, No, Bibhilu. Bibhilu means quickly. Yatsanu mi Mitzrayim. We left Egypt. Halach ma'an ya chorin. We have the arm of bright. We have the, 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 the bread of poverty on our shoulders. But we're free men. And from that, my father would get up and start leaving. And we'd look at each other. Abba. What's that? What's that? But, you know, as kids, we, still, we had the booklets from Yeshiva. Abba, I have 20 questions. Where are you going? I, I, I got to get through this booklet tonight. And my father's walking out the front door. And we all jump up to see where he's going. So like little Indians, we're following the chief right out the front door. Me and my brothers. My father goes outside. Me, Avi, Ari, Yossi. And there's another brother. I don't want to tell you his name because he's learning and we're going to leave him learning. <laughs> and, and we walk out the front door and my father goes up and down the block and he looks and he says, which way did they go? We're ready to leave. Which way did they go? And we'd walk out behind them. Could you imagine a neighbor looking out his front window? He sees six nutcases in white robes. <laughs> and he's like, hey, is it Purim or Pesach? No. But it's a, and we come back, but, but, but there was a heart. There was a heart. There was a heart. There was something that stirred inside. It says, Bode Olam, I want to see the heart tonight. I want to see what the story means to you. I want to see if you believe that you're part of that story. Because if you do believe you're part of that story, you might be the end of that story. I want you to hear what I just told you. If you believe that you belong to this story, then you'll have a right to be the characters to end this story. But if you believe you're telling, you know, you know, the fables of old, once upon a time. If you believe that that's what you're doing and you're kind of separated from that story, then Hashem says, if you're separated from the story, how do I make that story a part of you? How do I connect you to that story? Because that story of Egypt was the beginning. It was the prototype for all future Geulah. But if you're not connected to it, how do you connect to Geulah today? How do you connect to today's Geulah? We need a Gilui. We need to realize what's going on at this table. And we need to unlock all the blessings of the night and all the Shefa and realize that Kvodo Batsmo Kutsha Berichu is here on the table. My Rebbe, Rameh Yashon Rabinovich, told me, he said to me, that when Hashem comes down to your table, like the Teferet Shlomo, and he sees and listens and watches Avivait, you do your Pesach table, is how far he's going to give you Pesach. Pe Aleph Yud, Samich Aleph Lamed, Chatach. But he also told me, my Rebbe, that it's not just your table he goes to. My Rebbe told me that after he comes to your table on Pesach, he goes to the other people's table that you are responsible of making their Pesach possible. Hashem wants to know, how much Pesach did you spread to other people? Pliyayin Hara, we have such beautiful tables. And we have children around the table singing. And we have a father sitting in majesty and his children asking questions. But not everybody has that. Not everybody has that. Rabotai, open your hearts. Not everybody has that. My most fond memories 
as a boy growing up, honestly, was those Pesachs together with my father. When all my brothers were together, and we were all sitting at the table, and we all had our booklets ready, and each guy had his little piece that he was going to say, and then my mother would come in, and she would start getting us all riled up, and then my father would tell us over what he heard from the Mir Yeshiva over the years, when he grew up, and all the amazing Torah that came out of there. But there was a father at the table. Not everybody this year is going to have a father at the table. These terror attacks that just took place in Israel left so many families totally and absolutely destroyed. So many Ammanot, so many Yitomim in Klal Yisrael were sitting at these tables. And this year might be their first Pesach that they might be alone. It's bad enough that they lost the one that led the Seder. But these orphans now don't have someone to ask Manishtana to. These women are broken already, thinking how they're going to make it in the future without their husband. Did you see that whole write-up about this tzaddik, Rabbi Avishai, who was just murdered in front of his wife in, in Bnei Brak? She's broken to pieces. She says, I don't know how I'm going to go on, but I know Hashem's going to help me somehow. And Borel Mom says, of course I'm going to help you. I'm going to send you special people in Klal Yisrael. They're going to step up and do what Klal Yisrael needs. An amazing showing of an Ahavat Chinam. This is the time, Rabotai. We're starting again this year an unbelievable campaign for Kimcha the Pischa, for the, un the special Almanot in Yitomim, both here in Brooklyn and in Eretz Yisrael. I spoke to my Rebbe, my Rebbe told me he has a few almanot that he knows exactly the matziv he wants to be able to give. Yad Eliezer, again this year, is going to go out with hundreds of almanot and they're going to go through each case and they know who needs it and they're going to give them what they need for Pesach. We have the almanot, I spoke to this past week, Kupatair, they told me they have a few almanot from the terror attacks that they have a certain fund that they asked me, help us. We want to give them this year a Pesach. We want to be able to have those children have something because they don't have a father. They don't have a Pesach. They have a Vinu Shabbat Shammai. Hashem wants to know not just how your Pesach was, but what type of Pesach did you do for other people? Because at the end of the day, think about it. Kalal Yisrael was never in a matziv where after a corona, after what we've seen in the last month or two, we have so many nitzrachim that are in such dire and desperate needs. Rabotai, open your hearts. This is the night of all the shefa. It's the night of all the blessings. I want to tell you what we have going. And Bezat Hashem, we will, oh, I personally am telling you, will oversee every single donation that it goes to the Nitzrachim of Almanot Yitomim, maybe a few Talmidei Chachamim that are in dire straits, that will get the money after we know that they need it the most. We're talking about heart-wrenching situation. But Klal Yisrael right now needs a Yeshua. I want to bring a tremendous Zichut to Klal Yisrael. I cannot think of a bigger Zichut than to be able to lift up the Almana and the Yitomim on a Pesach when there's no father sitting at their table. It's bad enough that they lost a father. They're broken. They're broken. They need something to come into this Pesach with. Right now, you can go to the Chesed Fund and you can hit on the front page. It says over there, latest campaigns. And in the search box, just put Rabbi Duvi, D-U-V-I. And right away, the campaign comes up. Almanot and Yitomim. Rabbi Duvi's Almanot Yitomim campaign. Last year we were zochet to give out a quarter of a million dollars. We were able to help close to 800 Almanot. Could you imagine? But this year we need the zechut more than ever. We need to do more this year. Because we need this to be the one to close it. If you're ready to step up and do for Klal Yisrael something. That could be the biggest zechut on the biggest night of the year. To bring a geula then help us. I'm giving you my word, you'll see the money will go only to the ones that need it the most. Real, real cases that couldn't make Pesach without you. 
So like the Teferet Shlomo, when Borei Olam comes down to that table, he's going to be looking at you and all those that you made a Pesach possible. You can call the number 518-323-0376. Again, 518-323-0376. The ID of this campaign is 625. Or you can text my number, 732 520-0557. Again, you can text. Don't call. It's very hard to feel the calls. But text or WhatsApp. My guy works this phone and he's a, a champ. 732-520-0557. Could you imagine if we were Zoche to step up and give out to another 800 Almanot this year? What stir of a Zichut that would do in Shamayim? Please open your hearts. Let's make the Pe Aleph Yud, Samech Aleph Lamed, Chatach, available to Klal Yisrael, for Shefa, for Chen, on the greatest night of the year. We could be Zochet together to make a Pesach for the Almanot, for the broken, and Hashem can come down to us and say, you made Pesach for someone else. It's time to make a Geulah for you, Klal Yisrael. This is what's going to bring us out of this Galut. Thank you for listening.